Ladies and gentlemen, this is a warning. To protect theater owners and the makers of this horror vision film, viewers with nerve or heart conditions are advised to cover their eyes and ears whenever this object appears on the screen or whenever this sound is heard. Thank you. I have come here to chew bubblegum and kick ass. And I'm all out of bubblegum! Astro Radio Z is a horror, cult, exploitation film podcast by filmmakers, critics, musicians, journalists, and fans for the film obsessed. Here is your host, Derek Terry. Welcome back, listeners. I hope you're using your chi, you're focusing your energy towards the nearest drink you have on your desk or in your hand or on your coffee stand or on your table or the one that you just drank. Because, boy, you're going to have to go get some more because tonight we're going to be talking about perhaps the greatest shit movie of all shot on video history. (laughs) And what is that, folks? Boarding house. Boarding house. Oh, dear Lord. On September 18th, 1972, the Hoffman House was closed due to several mysterious deaths. The house was reopened as a boarding house. And the body count continues. I wonder who will be next to check out of the boarding house. Now, let's go back and take a time machine back to 2013, listeners. 2013, 31 Days of Horror episode. The first time Mr. Scott Davis ever was on Astro Radio Z. (laughs) I knew from that episode that him and I would have a long podcasting relationship because He brought to the table in that episode. If you go back and listen to it, I believe it's episode six. Go back and listen to it. He brought in Boarding House. And him and I literally were the only people that knew what the fuck that was. (laughs) And we we gushed about it for like 15 minutes. Fast forward now to 2017. And we're finally giving Boarding House its due and its proper own ed- episode here on Astro Radio Z. Scott, it's been a long journey. Are you excited for this tonight? I am so excited for this tonight. Uh, on that 31 Days of Horror, I can't remember if it was you who said this when I, because, you know, when you do 31 Days of Horror for the listeners, we do a wrap that wrap up episode where we talk about stuff, but we also are posting like what we have been watching in like Facebook groups and whatnot. And uh, I put in boarding house, I think. And I can't remember if it was you, Derek, that said this, or if it was one other person in the know who maybe wasn't on the show for some reason, but I think their quote was something like between this movie and Citizen Kane, Citizen Kane sucks my dick. <laughs> <laughs> it was something I wish that I fact. Could take credit for that, Scott. I really wish I could take credit. It was for that. either you or 
I don't know. Um, could have been Corey. Could have been Doug. I can. I don't know. But uh, it it was somebody. I and uh, I for some reason, even though I've probably butchered the actual word for word quote, it was something like that. And every time I think of boarding house, I think of that quote. <laughs> and I have to kind of agree. <laughs> I absolutely agree with that. Citizen King can suck my dick. Boarding house any day of the week over Citizen Kane. Woo! Oh, my God. Well, I know you and I are going to sit and gloat about this movie all night long, but this is the moment where we break Mark the Movie Man's boarding house cherry. Mark, yes. are you still hurting? <clears throat> I don't know yet. <laughs> I think I'm still <laughs> numb, especially after watching the original cut and then watching the two and a half hour director's oh, cut. Okay, before it. we get into the episode proper, it has to be addressed because uh, Code Red, or no, it wasn't Code Red, it was Slasher oh, Film. It was Slasher, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yep, Slasher put out uh, a deluxe edition of this where they had got uh, the the beta cam elements, the original beta cam elements from director John Wintergate, and they did a full remaster on DVD and the original edit of Boarding House before the distributor got a hold of it and recut it. And this cut, because the original Boarding House runs about an hour and 40 minutes long. The director's cut version runs two hours and 35 minutes long, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, yes, it's two hours and 35 minutes. <laughs> Boarding House is like if you read a Which Way book uh, in order of the pages and not in the order of the story. <laughs> and Boarding House Director's Cut is if you did read the Which Way book in the proper order. Uh, but decided to skip a few pages because he wanted to peek which solution was going to be the best. So you read both of them. And there were missing words yes. on those pages. Yes, there were. There so were if, you, if any of you have seen Boarding House and are, have been curious because of this release of this famous fabled director's cut, let me just save you the time and the worry and skip it. It's two and a half hours of some of the worst edited video I've ever seen in my entire oh, life. Yeah. <laughs> it's yeah. horrible. It's horrible. It is seriously, it fills in all the gaps in the story of Boarding House because Boarding House in general feels very random, purposely so, because the people that took it got like probably four hours of footage. You're like, what the fuck am I going to do with this? <laughs> and, and cut out a ton of shit. And that's what we have now, which we'll be talking. We're going to talk about the theatrical slash home video version because this was blown up to 35 millimeter and then shown in theaters very uh -huh. handful limited release but it okay. was we're going to talk about that version but we need to talk about this director's cut because it is one of the most baffling things i've ever seen is just like it was obvious john wintergate <laughs> had edited this thing and used every last transitional effect he could find well, it this is astounding Okay, first of all, I did not make it all the way through. Uh, I did not either. I only made it an hour in, and I said, "Yeah, I get the point." I, I was. I, I got forty minutes, and and I'm gonna. I will finish it. I will finish. It. I just didn't have time because I forgot what day it was, and I had to watch it all today. And I realized. Uh, see, here's the thing: is that I bought the slasher video DVD uh, from Diabolic a few years ago, like basically when it came out. And it was one of those most prized DVDs, and I had it in a case. Uh, you know, I still have the case, the actual case, but I put the actual DVD in a case when I went on vacation with some other stuff. I have not been able to find that case since, <laughs> oh, and it had no. some of my favorite DVDs in it. There, are, like it had that in it. It had my international cut of Gwendolyn in it. It had Evil Tunes. It had Hell Comes to Frogtown. All the classics. Um, that's, that's up for debate there. I classic. Mean, yeah. you, did say, you did say evil tunes. So I, I mean, I, I, and, I, and I mentioned that one on purpose because I know that <laughs> I for know some reason, for some reason, Derek, 
Derek does not find the great joy of that movie. I don't know. Well, listeners, listeners, <laughs> uh, uh, Patreon listeners will find out how feisty fucking Scott Davis is tonight in the outtakes episode. So go over to Patreon. <laughs> and hear Scott oh, Davis talking some bad shit. I was teasing, buddy. <laughs> but, the, uh, but, the, but no, I was like, uh, no. so it had all my favorite stuff and it got stolen. So it got stolen before I could delve into the extras, including this amazing director's cut. Uh, I saw. Let's, hey, hey, hold on. Quote, air quotes, amazing director's oh, wait, cut. Wait, 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 wait. Yeah, well, what I. Well, it looked like an amazing director's cut because at oh. that time when I got this, I'm like, holy crap, two hours and 40 minutes of this shit. <laughs> I got to do it. But no, I, I, I didn't get a chance to make it to it. And I noticed that uh, because uh, being in different places, uh, not naturally, not all of us are going to have copies of these movies. We kind of share them on uh, Rabbit and Plex and other things like that. And I noticed that he had the director's cut available i said oh my god do i dare and derek's message to me was you don't have to the editing is going to make you want to die and um this was his exact quote and um (laughs) it's gonna make you want to die and i'm like oh my god now i just have to take a beat he says it's the and and you know remember derek is a professional and talented editor and so i know that he's always like you know naturally if that's your field you're always like conscious of that I started watching this. Here's what the editing is like. Remember when this was made, 1982. So he's on these one of these old linear editing machines with that takes up a room and always has that fan running that seems to be louder than the actual sound. Yep, it's tape to tape. And yep. tape to tape. And you had all these little transitional effects. This is somebody who had unlimited time in one of these suites <laughs> and did not have the... Um, it reeks of somebody who did not have the confidence of what he had shot in, in order to get it to an audience because it cuts to – it has abrupt cuts. It has fades. It has wipes. It has all these effects, and it has this – not just within the scene, but within the shot. It will actually fade into the same shot. Constantly. <laughs> and the the regular movie, you know, for all these people who say, oh, no, the director's vision should always be first. Yeah, bullshit, because <laughs> they made a better movie. <laughs> the, distribu- the distributor saved this movie and said, no, you know what? Your movie is would be fine if you just did this. It's it's fine. Trust me. You don't need to do all these bells and whistles. You'll get the story itself will get people. It's so wacky already. It'll get people's attention. And so. The edit may be more conventional. It's the only thing in this movie that's conventional, but it is a lot more watchable. Uh, oh, because man. I couldn't believe even it. The 40 min- even the 40 minutes I was watching, I was like, what is happening? The- this is it- it's it's gobbledygook. Oh, the director's cut is like you got a new if anyone ever got a new VHS or SVHS camera back in the day. Uh, your home camera, the first thing you do is you play with the zoom. And after you're done zooming in and out, everything, go, oh, this is fucking cool. Then you find the special effects on the camera and you do every single one. It's like, (laughs) oh, look, SIPA. Hey, look, I can look at my butt negative. That's awesome. (laughs) It's like that only with transitions with this director's cut. It was like, (laughs) oh, look, I haven't used star wipe yet. Bink. And oh, look. Oh, wait. No, I was still in the same scene when I wiped from scene to scene. It was still. Ah, who cares? No one's going to notice. Hey, look at this one. (sighs) And, And in new movies, yes, you get scenes that are cut. A lot of modern films, it's like 10 seconds of scene tops. If you get a longer scene than that before a cut, it's it's unusual. And in this one, imagine if you're getting these cuts, but instead of just a cut, you're cutting to the same camera. So it's not really going anywhere. Nope. And and then if you don't cut with a hard cut, you're wiping. And this 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 thing has so many wipes, it would have George Lucas going, okay, no, now that's just excessive, man. <laughs> <laughs> what also another thing it does is it spoils things that happen in the movie coming up. Yeah. It literally spoils yeah. shots. 
arbitrarily thrown in to kind of throw you off kilter or to kind of like explain for some unknown reason characters in it just like okay well you just ruined this kill that happens 20 minutes in the future it's like yeah. what is the this edit is insane it's like dennis hopper's the last movie but for shot on video horror films <laughs> that's a deep cut for some of you folks but uh for like the 10 or 12 people in the world who have seen dennis hopper's the last movie that's what this is like for shot on video horror films. They, they freaking, they freaking, they have what is what you know? They have Costco uh, Christian Bale, uh, who uh, <laughs> you know they do some kind of flashback that you know in the original cut you don't get that flashback right away, so you're not quite sure what this guy's intentions are. But here you get a flashback right away. You're like, oh, this guy's skeevy. What the hell? And, and you don't get that right away in the original cut. The original cut was a lot. Bet you're right. Not only that, the random scenes. He he just he, he, they're supposed to be like either foreshadowing or whatnot, and 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 you just jump ahead to these random scenes that you're like have no context whatsoever, and then suddenly you get to those scenes again, but they're slightly different versions of those scenes. And you're like, what the hell? Oh, dude, it, trying to explain what the director's cut of Boarding House is, oh. it's, it's pointless. I would just say. Unless you are the most hardcore of boarding house fans, uh, skip it. Yeah. Completely skip it. And it's disappointing because it really does flesh out the story. All the stuff that was cut, all character stuff. So as you're watching this, what's so infuriating is not just the fact that the editing makes you want to jab something through your skull. <laughs> it's that. The editing is ruining what possibly could be a better version of the film. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. The way it's pieced together, because I'm looking in between and I'm just starting to enjoy something. And then we get a random wipe cut, uh, some kind of jump cut, a flash forward. And I'm like, what the hell? I was just enjoying that. There, There's a great movie in there, but his the technical or lack of technical prowess in the editing of the director's cut really makes it unwatchable. Oh, it's terrible. So let's move past the director's cut. I'm glad we got that out of the way because we needed to talk about that. I'm with Scott. I am at some point going to finish it. I, I got. I have to because I want to do a moviocrity on this. <laughs> you you got to. I can't wait to see that episode. Or I really can't. I But I got an hour in and I said, you know what? Sleep is more important than this. <laughs> right now. The dishes. So, Let's mowing the lawn, <laughs> uh, cleaning my underwear, <laughs> uh, just about anything. So let's go ahead and move past this section and let's actually start talking about boarding house. Boarding House, which claims to be the very first shot on video direct to VHS released film of all time, was shot in 1981 and released in 1982. Now, I had kind of said before that this was blown up the 35 millimeter and shown at very limited screenings across LA. I don't think it ever left LA. I'm not sure about that fact. Look it up. But I know it was a very limited release was put out into the market and confounded people everywhere. <laughs> and what boarding house is, 
it's the story of this house that was passed down through a family whose last name was the Hoffmans. The Hoffman house has this legendary mystique because all the people that live there mysteriously die. And we get this told to us in a five to seven minute long text crawl, the slowest text crawl (laughs) in cinema history at the beginning of this film, which I'm going to play you the clip right now of that text crawl. This is the gruesome police file of the Hoffman house where everybody dies. Run case file number DSH 9157. BHPD file number DSH 9157 Hoffman. On September 18th, 1972, Nobel Prize winners, Professor Don Hoffman and wife, leading authorities on telekinesis and the occult, found dead on the night of the 16th anniversary party. 9.45 p.m., mutilated bodies discovered by guests. September 26, 1972, only witness 13-year-old Hoffman Child testified to the apparent double suicide. December 4th, 1972. Hoffman youth committed to Camilla Sanitarium due to emotional breakdown. File closed. Welcome back. If you're still, if you're not asleep after listening to that, congrats. (laughs) But, but after we learn the entire history of the Hoffman house, we come back to the story of our main character, Jim Royce who is a businessman of some sort. We don't really particularly know what he does. He just makes deals with the drunkest guy on the face of the planet. They draw up plans and make deals. And he gets the uh, the deed to the Hoffman house. And when he learns of the Hoffman house, he's like, oh, this is a nice big house. This is a great opportunity to open up a sorority house for hot chicks. (laughs) And the movie essentially is this guy who's super into metaphysics, who's into new age, who uses his mind to move matter and to figure out what the meaning of the universe is, decides to (laughs) decides to open up this house where he's the only male in it, surrounded by hot chicks. And they have pool parties every day. They give him back rubs. And uh, he slowly starts to teach another person in the house, played by his wife, Kalasu, how to move things with her mind. And all of a sudden, things start going weird in this house because all multiple people with magical powers start moving shit <laughs> and start battling without knowing it. And on top of that, there's a killer. On the loose. All these people are randomly being killed by this horribly toasted overlay of a of a demon on the screen. Yeah. It's like the I call it the chroma key monster. Yes. Yeah, the chroma key monster that's not even properly framed. Whatsoever. No, no, it's, no. The edge. it's the edge of the chroma frame, like a third of the way, a quarter of the way from the left. So you just got this line. <laughs> it's like what the hell is it? Graph demon? What the hell? Right. Every time I see that, the OCD Derek that works on movies <laughs> wants to take that and and scale it up. <laughs> wants to fix it every time I see that. It's like, oh, I want to fix it. Like every time I saw that goddamn witchcraft stock open where where the fucking toasted effect is pe- peeking out on the edges, I'm like, oh, I want to fix that. <laughs> the whole time. But uh, essentially what ends up happening is there's multiple people with magical powers and a demon and people are dying. People are doing coke. Women are banging dudes. Dudes are banging chicks. Uh, Topless pool parties and all sorts of other nonsense. And um, not a lot of it makes sense. And it goes on for an hour and 40 minutes. And if you're with your buds and with drinks, you'll have been drunk and had a great time. (laughs) 
<laughs> but if you're watching this by yourself and you're not prepared, holy cow, is Boarding House going to chew you up and spit you out? It is one of the weirdest movies I've ever seen. Now, Mark, the movie yeah. man, I'm yeah. so interested to hear what your thoughts are of Boarding House seeing how you are the virgin here. <laughs> I just, I, I'm just sitting there. It's an, it's an experience, is what this is. This is something you don't think about. You just experience because if your brain at all tries to put some things together, it is going to cook itself like a microwave <laughs> oven. Uh, I, you know, it was funny watching and John Wintergate it, it, I, until I looked at the credits and whatnot, I didn't realize that the star was also the director and writer, but it makes so much sense because the director oh God, yes. put himself in every scene where there's at least multiple hot women or if there's a single woman, she's naked. So it's that cliche right there <laughs> with the director going, I'm going to make a movie. I'm going to make a movie where I get hot chicks to touch me. Uh, <laughs> but his wife's in the movie. so <laughs> Yeah, which I did not know until you said that, yeah. that that was his actual wife. Yes. I didn't realize that either, but you know, I, for me, <laughs> if it wasn't the scene where he's in his underwear in his office trying to practice his meditation on a three-quarter inch tape, um, <laughs> <laughs> greatest scenes ever <laughs> which is hilarious i made that face my avatar for the day because i just couldn't help it because it was just so priceless <laughs> he's sitting there like really struggling hard to move the plant and then all of a sudden the plant's replaced by a three-quarter inch tape then it's back to the plant i'm like what never mind that three-quarter inch tape later is actually a demo tape for one of the actresses at the boarding house but above all else what gets me is the scene where he's in front of the house and he opens up the paper. It's early on in the film and he goes, Oh, they finally got it right. And he then reads what the description is for the boarding house for the ad he put in. I'm like, that is the creepiest description. <laughs> Would you like to just say what it was? It, <laughs> it was creepy. It's creepier in the d director's cut because it, it goes much on a little creepier. longer. Yeah, and it's, it's creepier. In, in the director's cut, he's going, oh, yeah, all these fine ladies going to be around. I'm like, <laughs> man, I mean, there are, God, there are people on actual sex offender lists that, have, that would have heard that and said, <laughs> Dude, come on. <laughs> That's a little far. <laughs> the description he gave, I'm like, well, you know, the minute I heard that, I'm like, well, this is going to be a short film. Nobody's going to take that posting. <laughs> oh, no. There's there's more women than they have rooms coming to the yeah. boarding house. They're like dropping hot chicks or dropping <laughs> from the sky to get in this place. <laughs> the funny thing is, is that even though I, I had not checked uh, when I first saw this movie, I thought, you know what? I'll bet you, because because he he even though he wrote it and also stars and then directs, he gives himself different credits for each one. Yeah, it's important to, to know. And I I just knew. I said, you know what? Without even checking the IMDb, I just know the star is also the guy who wrote and directed this movie. <laughs> you because can always tell. You can always tell. He makes himself into. First of all, he's always showing off his body. It never misses a chance to show him in a speedo. Um, he, he incidentally, Mark's description was dead on. I kind of think thought that there were times where he looked like a cross between uh, um, uh, uh, Roger Daltrey and Richard Lynch <laughs> and David Lee and, Roth <laughs> and a little maybe a little bit of Rod Stewart thrown in yeah 80s version of that and Rod Stewart like from the do you think of sexy video um, but um, the um, uh, but yeah he, he gets these like, and he's shown as being when they're actually all the women are in the house he's not like constantly you know grabbing them or like forcing himself out no he's they, it actually now when he does that he's like portrayed as like this really nice guy who's like a junior half and it's like come on girls let's have a party this weekend oh let's all get in the hot tub right on you know and like oh really show to show tell me about yourself i really want to hear it and he's like doing this whole thing and you're yeah. like 
is he just like a nice guy? And like, oh no, he's banging a few of them. No, okay. that, was the big, that was the big thing. Was and he was literally it. sitting there? They had the girls would have conversations about, oh, he's just not into that man. That's not what he's about. And uh, he's way into metaphysics and stuff like this. And then immediately after that line, he literally bangs every single one of the girls in that he's, place. He's banging <laughs> them all, and he's like, and he, and, and he's always like this, like, uh, no, I want to know about you. You know, and he's like, and if this wasn't enough to say, like, yep, he's like this awesome guy who can get all these women and can actually be, you know, in uh, on fleek, as the kids would say today. Um, I have no idea what the fuck that de- means to their desires and everything like that, and all that, you know, and in tune to them. He's also, well, ha- maybe we haven't made him cool enough. I know. This guy is so focused and awesome, he can move stuff with his mind. <laughs> I'm like, come on. I mean, this was like, you know, this is like every buddy who make who writes, directs, produces, and stars in a movie about themselves, who makes them into like this either tortured or awesome person. This is every Vincent Gallo. This is every Tommy Wiseau. I mean <laughs> Neil it really is. Neil Breen. Neil Bre- I still Neil- need to get into Neil Breen. I, <laughs> this is yes, like, you do, Scott. You know, I yes, have a you feeling, do. I have a feeling I, I, I really want to, and I have a feeling just hearing things, I'm like, Neil Breen might break my brain. <laughs> <laughs> this is will. Like, it will break your brain. <laughs> this is like a precursor to Neil Breen. He's like a lounge lizard Mrs. Garrett in this, chicken, <laughs> in this movie. Oh. <laughs> Let's talk about, oh my god, that's great! What about his buddy, his buddy that's like bootleg fucking Conrad Brooks, <laughs> business, <laughs> business partner. Oh god! Uh, you you thought like old school, like Foster Brooks style, old vaudeville jokey uh, alcoholic. Red Skelton type stuff went out of vogue. Nope. He's bringing it back in the 82. <laughs> this character. This guy, literally every scene, you're wondering when he's going to fall on his face. He's that drunk in hey, every scene. He mentions Milwaukee, though. There's a Milwaukee drop. So there you go. Right. Well, well every alcoholic has to mention. That's <laughs> right. It's like the Mecca of alcoholic. So I got a question for you guys. What was he a businessman for? I don't know. I just know he has to sign contracts. That's all yeah. I know. <laughs> He's constantly <laughs> signing contracts. Mark, what do you think he was in the business of? Well, I don't think it was in the theatrical cut. It was in the in the director's cut. Um, oh. He was a developer. And what does that mean? He he built buildings. He had okay. he, he bought right. a building. They've got a scene with him where he's drunk on the edge of a building. He just <laughs> um, <laughs> and and our guy Jim Royce is in the computers. He's calm, so he's a communications guy. From what I gathered with the little dialogue, you get that they explain it, and he was signing a contract with the drunk guy to get a contract to be the guy for this drunk guy's new buildings apparently uh but that's in the director's cut so uh in this they i watched that scene and all i got out of it was a bunch of crossfades and star wipes <laughs> <laughs> and i didn't quite catch that in, in between i them. think i saw i couldn't make sense out of it because of the edits yeah y- yeah it's <laughs> y- it's a the guy our 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 you know royce our rolls royce here uh, he he supposedly is in, in communications and calm because that's how he got all his money. He developed, uh, yeah, communications of some sort. They don't ever specify. He's just he's just a guy macking on women is what he is. But he he's playing that Mister Mysterious is what it is. And the drunk guy, I his business partner just randomly shows up in spots. It's awesome. Uh, he comes over to a party later on. He didn't even know they're having a party. He tries to play golf and passes out, which it, actually he falls really well. Yeah, yeah the was, old gag of the drunk guy trying to swing a golf club and falling on his face. Yuck, 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 yuck. He, he fell well, though. I give him props for that. He, he didn't hesitate. Or he just right over. Well, remember, this movie is supposed to be a horror comedy intentionally. What? Intentionally. What? Yes. 
What, I always comedy? thought I, what? See, I always see I see see I saw the uh, comedy tag on IMDb. I'm like, oh, how cute! They're being generous. <laughs> <laughs> well, the, the thing is, back in the day, the reason why the distributor recut the film wasn't just because the edit is just you literally want to burst your eyeballs out with a pickaxe, but. <laughs> It's because the distributor thought it leaned far too much to comedy. And they wanted to market this as a horror film. The director's cut isn't funny. None of it's funny. (laughs) (laughs) There isn't intentional comedy to be found anywhere in Boarding House. There's this weird, there is a weird uh, pie in the face scene. Well, there's the comedy. It's easily. It is so. It is so non-comical. But it was done it with so, magic, Scott. It is the weirdest. It is the weirdest pie scene you will ever see in a movie. It, it it's just like you're just one. You you look at it and you think, what am I supposed to do? Am I supposed to laugh or am I supposed to like? <laughs> be at that point, <laughs> well, at that point in the film, the film is so disjointed because it basically is a bunch of vignettes of these people hanging out and partying <laughs> at their house, and one person will randomly get killed, and they're trying to set up the fact that this creepy uh, gardener who is John Wintergate put in a bad wig and oh my God, <laughs> in a leather yeah. jacket is creeping around. They're trying to set up that this guy is the actual killer, but of course he's not. You but know, they try to red, he might as well have a he might as well be carrying an actual red herring with him. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> but the, the film is seriously just a, a series of vignettes uh of like here we there's another pool party. Oh, here's the guy, the gardener creeping around again. Here's somebody getting killed inexplicably. Then somebody digging in the backyard. <laughs> then again, another pool party. Somebody's taking a shower. Then they get killed with their tits repeatedly hitting the glass of the <laughs> shower. <laughs> <laughs> they die and then rinse and repeat. <laughs> That's the whole movie. You missed the random oh. hog's head where you're pulling out a dead rat out of its mouth for whatever reason that never shows up again i thought oh well maybe that's the theme that the you know the haunting whatever spirits in this house makes them look ugly but we only get that once get that it, once uh, there's other well there's other little weird things that like never have a payoff i don't know if they do in the director's cut but if they do who cares i mean you need, they need to have a payoff <laughs> here i mean like we have a whole sequence like that last must last like two or three minutes of this woman finding out that her roommate lied to her about some kind of audition. And yes, so, that's and in the director's cut. Took her, yeah. Who gives a shit? It's not in this cut. Yep. <laughs> if you're not going to have the payoff, don't put in the first scene because it has nothing to do with the plot. <laughs> it has nothing to do with anything, dude. Anything. And, you know, it's not like, well, well we had to leave it in to, so that the film would get to feature length. You know, and it, Hour and 38 minutes is already a lot longer than most movies of this type were. Most of the movies of this type were around the 85 minute mark back then. You could have cut that. Yeah. Not that I'm complaining. Not that I'm complaining. Gentlemen, I think you made a fantastic movie. (laughs) (laughs) The problem with with all these cuts, too, is suddenly you have random people showing up. At least in the director's cut, it makes a little bit more sense. But there's an African-American woman who just shows up. In this, you're like, who's this? You hadn't seen her for like the entire movie, like the entire movie, and then all of a sudden there's the scene. It's just before the pie scene, I think. It is is you're like, wait, who's that? Well, wait, what about the what about the Asian girl who is uh, all of a sudden sexing up on that rapist? She just disappears. That's right. She's she. Well, no, that it's the rapist minion. It wasn't the rape. It was the rapist's minion. He sent him. Yeah. Oh, that was in the director's cut. I'm sorry. I'm spoiling it now. But the <laughs> young guy, <laughs> the young guy that just randomly shows up at the house, who that was the most random scene to where we have him making a deal or something with the ladies. And then they kick him out of the car. And I'm like, what, what was the deal? Is, is that the deal of them kicking him out of the car? I think he was was trying to get some a blowjob or something. Oh, that that might have, but well, it wasn't ever a step. You know, fucking, there's no. Wait a minute. 
But, but, you know, maybe he was paying them to kick him out of the card so he could get noticed by Rolls Royce. So he pulls him into the boarding house and then he goes in there and he finds the one girl who the rapist guy was looking for. My God, just talking about this. Oh, I think I've gone blind. Um, <laughs> the young guy well, I mean, then yeah, chooses go. to take a break and, and, and have sex with the, the Asian lady who disappears. She just, it's like, oh, okay. Um, you know, young guy gets electrocuted. Uh, and yeah, I, I don't know. I, <laughs> there's people that disappear that you don't know why and show up and you don't know why. And directors could at least gives you a little bit more explanation. Well, there is this rapist in the movie, as he have you have you heard? I mean, and you, because here's the thing: is that there you, is this rapist. That, 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 yeah, the people Costco. Are, yeah, people are Christian people are here because because listeners who have not seen this movie are hearing this and like saying like, wait, you that is not a word you can just like throw around. <laughs> like it's, you have to explain. There is this woman, and you know, I gotta tell you, these are the hardest scenes to watch, and I don't think they were meant to be that way. Just like. Today they are very hard for to watch. Uh, where this g- one of the women that's in the house, Cindy, I think her name is, is uh, ran away from her yuppie bo- yuppie boyfriend because the boyfriend was this abusive jerk who was very possessive, and it shows in flashbacks had uh, raped her and assaulted her. And uh, this it's this yuppie who just, I swear to God, it's this yuppie scumbag who sounds like Quick Draw McGraw. <laughs> you like, I'm sorry, I did, you made me hurt you. I didn't mean to mean hurt you. I don't like this lifestyle, though. Nope. <laughs> what is with all these women, Natty? What is this, and that guy? What's the situation here? And we, needless to say, <laughs> he's introduced in the film early on as this dude drinking wine out by a pier as yeah. he's talking about how he regrets what he did. And there's no context to that scene. There's nothing. All of a sudden, there's just some dude saying, oh, I'm so sorry. I miss you. Oh, man, I wish I could I could uh, apologize and all. Just the scene goes on for like three, four minutes. And then we don't see him again till halfway through. And we find out he's a fucking rapist. Well, see, and they pull that trigger early in the director's cut. Yeah, they do. I did did make it that far where they show the flashback that that's what he's sorry for. So already in the director's cut, you're like, well, screw this guy. No, this guy is a scumbag. But um, he comes up there and he acts like a scumbag immediately to her when he finally does catch up to her because the other guy finds her by finding her at the house and such. And um, right away, he's very possessive and everything like this. It's very hard to watch. She, being this abused person, actually agrees to go into a, a room alone with this person. Like that yeah. blew my mind. That like, blew no, my mind. Oh, what are you doing? And she's still like, "Well, maybe I'll take him back. I don't know. I'm confused." You're like, "Oh my God, Stockholm syndrome, lady! Please, 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 don't do this." And there's the sequence with them uh, later on where you find out the fate of cindy later on which is just not pleasant it's actually so, one of the more disturbing sequences in the film yeah mm-hmm. it's uh because she uh spoiler alert guys she is one of the uh women that does get killed here's also one of the most incongruous parts of the story i don't know maybe it's explained in the director's cut at this point i do not care <laughs> <laughs> let's just talk let's stop talking about the director's cut and let's I'm just not, talk about the cut like just, most just, people are gonna see exactly is it is that so jim takes her to the beach to say like oh tell me about it. i'm really sorry to hear that that's really bad and of course jim puts the moves on her and their ha- and they, you know, hook up consensually. It seems on the beach there, and an unknown figure comes up behind and knocks Jim out with a rock or something. And Cindy sees the person who comes up, and the the force like makes her like bleed and stuff, and like walk into the water in a really disturbing sequence. Because, and I think it's part of the reason it is so dis- disturbing isn't just you know how lonely it seems is that you also know the background of the character. She has not had an easy road. So that's very disturbing. But here's the incongruous part. He wakes up and gets a note that seems to be read written by her ex 
who he now knows at this point was this stranger that just that tracked her down and was very abusive. Oh, okay. I guess he's, she's gone off with him. Doesn't think that I just got knocked out. I now can't find out where this woman is. And now I have a note by somebody who I know is a criminal abuser. Nope. Just dr- does it shrugs it off, does not contact the police, even though his two best friends are police officers. Yep. Yep. <laughs> hey man, he's got more pool parties to attend. He, well, there's he just, way like, more titties to be it off. bashed against the, the glass windows. I, I couldn't get over that. I'm like, just like, why would you just shrug that off? I mean, even just like any. So, of course, later on, they actually go to question him. Like, because of course they do. Course, <laughs> this they is do. like, just like, I mean, it's it, 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 that was the part that I'm just like, I, 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 I don't I don't know if the people who made this movie exist in the same dimension as i do (laughs) well the thing is that sequence the whole it's actually one of the better filmed sequences of the of the entire movie because let's be honest this is kind of slapdash and all over the place but this sequence where she gets up and starts bleeding out of the eyes and out of the mouth and all over her body is in the sound that's in there It is quite disturbing and it's actually set to, you know, they're on the beach by the ocean. It's actually really nicely filmed where the rest of it's stuck in this really cramp, ugly looking house that all the rooms look the same. And this, in this endless pool party that's going on, I swear none of these chicks wear anything but bikinis all day long. Uh, (laughs) <laughs> it seems to be, which I'm not complaining about in boarding house. I mean, shit for a movie, that's fine. But in reality, I don't know. Other than the Playboy Mansion, I don't know where the hell this goes on. Um, but mm, it's well, there's multiple sequences in this film that the the murders that happen, the horror sequences that if they had played that angle up a little bit more, actually, I think this could have been a decently effective horror film. Mark, what did you think of the horror sequences in this with the, with the ghost that was set up like a red herring, like a uh, Dario Argento movie with a guy with black gloves and all this other garbage. Yeah, uh, the horror scenes in here are actually, yeah, quite horrific. I mean, you get that one scene, uh, you know, where they're going through the history of the house. And for those of you who uh, were, you know, born uh, before the age of a smartphone, uh, they, they had a, f- a food disposal unit where a woman gets her arm stuck in it and the, the, the ghost turns it on and basically gets her arm shredded in a garbage disposal. And that's pretty scary. Then there's the one where the lady has, which is actually a rather chilling scene, is a, a woman who has the file for the Hoffman house she makes her hang herself with nylon and it's in this creepy scene where she hands it over to the ghost, you know, the, the guy with the, whoever it is with the glove. And then she's in this trance where she takes off her, her shirt. She's just in her negligee. She goes up this ladder with this nylons that she had and she hangs herself with it in a rather brutal fashion. And then a guy right after that is pulling out his intestines. Yeah, you're right. The beach scene. I mean, uh, you get the one girl whose eyes uh, explode and fall yeah. into the, 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 you know, the salad uh, or whatever the pie. <laughs> um, the, the death scenes themselves in here are rather brutal, it, it, you know, especially for a film this early on. And yeah, it, had they played it more along the lines of say uh and since you know we're going through these video violence uh where they took the the death scenes at least a little more serious this could be a really effective horror film unfortunately again technical aspects even for those who aren't that familiar with technical aspects of filmmaking are going to be distracted by the technical aspects of filmmaking in this movie well let's let's be honest If you haven't turned it off seven minutes in because you've watched nothing but a black screen with green text on it, with a guy (laughs) reading it, 
I, I mean, seriously, the first time I ever saw this movie tonight, my good bud, Timmy, you were supposed to come on, but he got stuck at work, so he couldn't join us. He was the one who introduced me to boarding house a number of years ago, and we were drinking around my place. And he's like, dude, I got a movie for you. I know I've told this story before in Astro Radio Z, but nah, not everybody listens to all of my shows. So I'll tell it again here because it, 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 there's a point to it. And he tosses in this movie, doesn't tell me what it is. We had had at least four or five beers at that point. So we were just getting primed. And all of a sudden, this movie starts. And the movie starts with the warning, the horror vision warning. This is a warning to protect theater owners and the makers of this horror vision film. Viewers with nerve or heart conditions are advised to cover their eyes and ears whenever this sound is heard. Thank you. Which longtime listeners of Astral Radio Z will know that is the sound clip that I use for spoilers on Astral Radio Z. So if you've ever wondered why this is a warning, that's from Boarding House. Hey. I've been using that for years. <laughs> so the movie starts off with that. And then literally for seven minutes has a, a black screen with green text detailing all of the history of the Hoffman house halfway through it. I look at my buddy and say, what the fuck are we watching? <laughs> what the fuck is this? And he just giggles his ass off the entire time. But Scott, when you first saw this, what did you think of the fact that it starts off with this endless text crawl? Well, it starts off with these endless text crawls, and then they would try to spice it up by throwing in a few like weird homegrown early 80s video effects midway through it and then there's uh also the they showed you know they they showed like a, a sequence of it and they i was watching this and basically i think the reason i watched it is because i was it was the 31 days of horror my patience was at an all-time high at that point and um i figured i bought the thing I better watch it. <laughs> Otherwise, but I'm sitting there. I'm watching this. I am by myself. I'm just there's no one to turn to except the dog, and so the dog keeps on getting the like seeing her dad like give her these puzzled looks like. Bleh. Like you go, the what the fuck as, is as, this, as, Misty? As, what as the as fuck as is as this? As if this? Yeah, it's as if Misty could like come in and just like chime in. Well, you see, I think what they were going for was padding, Scott. <laughs> <laughs> they could, you know, as, oh, but like you know, honestly, after spending a half an hour with this movie, you do half expect her to, to respond because you think that reality has just stopped working <laughs> because this movie, it. Mark had it dead on when he said it's an experience earlier. It's one of those things where you don't just watch this movie and try to make you really do experience it and it blows your mind. And it really blows your mind uh, when you realize because we're, we all talk, these are like, this is like the li latest in the series that Astro Radio Z has done about the shot on video films of the 80s and stuff. And of course, you always hear about things like, you know, oh, Blood Cult. Well, that was the first. Uh uh. No, it wasn't. It wasn't the first. And Boarding House... Or, or not Sledgehammer. Was, Sledgehammer or, is one that always comes up, too. Sledgehammer comes up because that came out before Black Hope, but before both of those was Boarding House. And not only was it shot on video, they shot it on video and blew it up to 35 millimeter and released it to theaters. Now... I do have one very obscure movie in my collection that I have kept under wraps for a long time, and it's not a horror film, not really, uh, that I've actually meant to like pass on to the No Budget Nightmares people for a long time because the only – it's shot on video, and the only uh, copyright I can find on it says 1981. I don't think that can be possibly right. If it does, it predates Boarding House. Otherwise – this might be the beginning, guys. Uh, and it not only is shot on video, it played in theaters like this. So, okay, so you opened up a can of worms. You got what is this movie? 
Oh, it's a fantasy film. I I don't even know if I want to share the title right now. Why? Don't be like that. Don't don't come on my show, Scott <laughs> Davis, and, and drop that kind of bullshit. I have got this movie called, um, and I I've heard, seen the cop only copyright I can find. It says 1981. I don't think that can be right. Just to be for the record, but it certainly looks like it could be. It is extremely early 80s, but it's uh, it's called Way Bad Stone. Hmm. And it is a basically somebody's Dungeons and Dragons fantasy on a cable access budget. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely give it to Doug Tilly and Mopart. Those boys will watch the <laughs> shit out of that. I've been meaning to give it to them for a long time. I've been sitting on it forever, and I'm like, I got to get this to them somehow. <laughs> I, <keep on> forgetting. <laughs> I mean, they're doing doing David the Rock Nelson movies for Christ's sake. Hand it to them. <laughs> <laughs> I got to do it. Okay. So I'll have to contact them before this airs and let them know. By the way, heads up. <laughs> got a no, fuck them. Exclusive here on Astro Radio. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you know what? If you want to do. I'll give it to both of you, and you know you can. No, I ain't gonna cover that shit. Of this boring <laughs> ass Dungeons and Dragons fantasy with somebody who looks like the freaking Cookie Crisp Wizard. <laughs> <laughs> that might be a good uh, double feature with Boarding House. Because holy shit, Chris. Oh my gosh! Well, that was the big. That's the big thing around the circles is that this, you know, that's the huge argument. What is the first shot on video film ever released? And I have to say, when the the details come in, it's got to be Boarding House. I don't think there's a a discussion really on it. I I think so. Yeah, I I would say so. I mean, the earliest one that I've heard people talk about is Boarding House. So. Yeah, and and that would make sense at the time it was because that's when the ye old camcorders were just starting to get into, you know, full swing for uh, folks who could buy them at home, uh, <laughs> but they were still expensive. But you could still buy them retail. I think uh, around that time they were starting, and they were kind of the the gimmick too. Of if you were a geek, you had the camcorder. Uh, <laughs> in the in the 80s so i wouldn't doubt it i would it seems like it you know and more proper props to him for for trying to edit this i use that term loosely um well remember they didn't edit this the distributor ended right. up editing this yeah and we didn't see this director's cut it was hidden and only friends and family had seen it until now until right. slasher video put it out Right. And, it, you know, the, the only version that was available out there forever, it's just like, wow, OK. <laughs> and that's the better cut. Can you fucking believe that? Yeah, I, I can't believe it. But after watching the director, I like the, the original cut, that cut that I watched first is actually the better cut. I understand exactly why they did what they did. That's the one uh, you need to watch, really, because, yeah, it might be a little more incoherent, but it's a lot more entertaining and it's a lot less time in your life. But it really feels like that's the earliest, you know, someone feeling out how to do this in all. Well, it's the first released one. I'm well, sure yeah. there's others, but this was the first released one. So before we wrap this up and we give our final thoughts, I want to do a good and a bad with this film. Uh, Mark, what would be your favorite part of this movie? My favorite part of the movie would have to be the uh, beach scene that we talked about. It was it was probably the best shot, the creepiest part. You know, it it was the most coherent. Yeah, I I would say that's probably uh, right next to any of the deaths. (laughs) I loved all the deaths in this movie. So, I'm surprised. I'm surprised you didn't say the scene in which he's in the bathtub and he raises the the, oh, the soap. soap. The I, I, I forgot about that. How he moved the soap with in the bathtub, and I'm looking at it going. Why is she amazed? He's just moving it with his dick. What the hell? It's like <laughs> it's like that's not telekinesis. That's just biology. It's a boner. It's just it's a boner. boner. He's just like woo. You know? <laughs> <laughs> oh, Scott Davis, what's your favorite part of Boarding House? Oh, I will soap part. But I mean, like, I just love um, I don't know if I can pick an actual just a favorite part because I just love uh, as wacky as the movie would get. Every time the wackiness would be kicked up another notch, 
I would just love it. So even probably maybe the conclusion would be the best part because yes. I just loved how nuts the movie got. Uh, it, it was just each little piece like added to this weird like this weird like Sunday is like oh now we're gonna give you sprinkles now we're gonna give you cherry now we're gonna give you almonds such this is the best Sunday ever <laughs> I mean it's like it's like one of those movies where they just pile more and more crap on and you just keep eating it because it's so awesome you just can't believe it. like oh I'm gonna hate myself for this and there's no nutritional value but give me more yeah <laughs> it's and, really a great movie uh, I think probably that. I, I, I got to go with Scott, actually. I'm going to revise mine. It's this conclusion, this conclusion that is completely different from the rest of the freaking film. Yeah. Oh, we yeah. get this kind of Night of the Demons type of thing going on where the the, 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 the final reveal is going on. And uh, spoiler, spoiler, uh, the, the girl, her hair is just crazy. And she drifts in and out from going, I'll swallow your soul. Hi, how are you? <laughs> Dude, she city. reminds me. She reminds me a lot of John Michael Thor in Rock and Roll Nightmare. Yes, yes. yes, yes. I was. I kept on expecting you to say, "I am the intercessor." Yes. <laughs> <laughs> you you <laughs> stepped totally in the wrong way, Bob. You know, and totally you, like that. You get the dramatic, low-budget confrontation where we have Rolls Royce and his girl, who both are really talented in the telekinesis standing there holding but their hands not. out <laughs> but they're not they're he holding their hands out is, and she just started reading a couple books <laughs> they're holding their hands out like they're asking uh for a donation and they're like he's like focus on the light focus. and i'm like what the hell's going on what light what the <laughs> you got punk you know hair hair rock girl going against these two and they're standing like two feet away from each other and i'm like knock her out what the hell? Oh, man, I'm telling you. That, that conclusion is crazy. It is crazy. I have to say my favorite part of Boarding House, which there are many. <laughs> there are many. The best thing about Boarding House to me is John Wintergate. As the, <laughs> as the lead actor, every time he's on screen, I am thoroughly invested in this movie. He is so strange in this movie, and I think intentionally so. His character is so weird. It makes no sense. His style is pure 80s. The fact that this dude wants to do nothing but walk around in Speedos the entire time <laughs> flabbergasts me. I, my favorite scene in this movie comes very early on when he strips down to his Speedos in his office and in the director's cut, you get the entire version of him literally standing in front of his window downtown L.A., stripping down and then stretching <laughs> in the sun and then going in, in doing some transcendental med meditation to attempt to move things. And he's got these wild eyes and he's doing all this finger power bullshit. He is literally one of the greatest characters in all of shit cinema <laughs> he, literally his character in boarding house it is iconic it is unforgettable he is my my good of this movie let's go on to the bad of boarding house scott what would you say is the worst aspect of boarding house there's really not too much that I'm going to trash in this movie because even the crap was good. Uh, I mentioned maybe the uncomfortableness of the uh, sequence before. That's probably something. Otherwise, I don't know. Maybe the fact that uh, the band 33 and the third, when their song finally comes on, it sounds way too reminiscent of Pat Benatar's Treat Me Right. And being a big Benatar fan, I kind of do take that personally. So, I mean, it's like, you know, so, but yeah, it, it's, it's a pretty bad band name. You know, there, there's worse out there, but uh, not many. <laughs> that, that would probably be the best because, I mean, otherwise we've, we've covered, you know, the uncomfortableness of the scenes before. We've covered the Speedo. Um, yeah, I guess, you know. Uh, You're saying off. the speedo is a bad thing? What? No, I'm not saying the speedo is a bad thing. I'm saying that the character being as skeezy as he is, you're just like ah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's yeah. hilarious. Uh, Mark the movie man. What's the bad of Boarding House? Oh man, that's tough. Um, yeah. be because 
People people throw around the term so many times, so bad it's good. And there's been debates on the internet and people debating that phrase. If you went into Webster's Dictionary and said, so bad it's good, boarding house, it would say, see boarding house. It, while the stuff may not be well produced at all and it's incoherent, it is so mind blowingly entertainment. You, yeah. it, you, you just sit there and you watch. And as I said, you experience this. And at the end, you go, I don't know what I just watched, but I actually kind of enjoyed that, especially for horror fans out there. Yeah. And I got to show this to everyone I know. Yeah, yeah, and oh, we, I gotta show this to such and such. We're we're gonna have a blast, and you sit and you watch and you have fun, and yeah, you poke fun at it. If I had to pick one thing out of the whole thing, and it really, it's not necessarily a bad thing, as it was just really surprising compared to the rest of the film, is the death of the cat. <laughs> that was disturbing. Which. You know, I I like, yeah, you you know, I I understand what and what was worse about that scene is not just the fact that they did the cat, which it impressed me how much they showed on camera that they were acting as if they were actually killing this cat with a hammer. And it's during the sex scene, (laughs) intercut with a sex scene. But later on, the girl's given the box to the cat. And she immediately thinks Rolls Royce killed her kid. I'm like, she jumps from point A to point Y in like two seconds. I'm like, you really think this guy who you were with all night did this? You know, so it was well, that, you know, yeah, it was because some, it was because whoever that she said, where, who's this from? This is, I don't know, probably Jim, a present from Jim. Well, well yeah, but yeah, she believed her. her. They, they've been at each other's throats the whole time. And that's what I, I'm like sitting here going that whole little sequence. I'm like, wow, seriously. But then what's even better is the fact of the, the, they're running and he falls during the train tracks because They've got this amazing house to where <laughs> <laughs> they run. Yeah, it's immediately outside, never <laughs> established. Yeah, he chases her out of the house, and they are immediately on the train tracks. The lo- <laughs> guys, location, location, location. <laughs> <laughs> they run out of the house, and all of a sudden, they're on a train. I'm like, wow, they just like time warped. And so he trips, and she shows him the box of the cat, and he's like, oh, man, oh, you think I really did that? And then she sits there, and then they fade, and I'm like, what the hell? <laughs> <She's> really- <laughs> all that of those all those scenes are all overdubbed very poorly yeah. as well. You know, so I guess that that scene there would be but otherwise, yeah, there's really not a lot to rip on it because this film is <laughs> embracing exactly what type of film it is. There's some films out there that don't. They try to be more than they are. This film is embracing exactly what it is, and I'm not sure what it is, <laughs> but at the end, I was entertained, and I wanted to share it. So. <laughs> I would, not to linger on, because uh, I think we, we've thoroughly yeah. discussed this flick, but I would have to say the bad would be that rape scene. I yeah, think it okay, comes out yeah. of nowhere. It It is unnecessary. I think that Cole character arc is unnecessary and padded and adds I think, nothing to this film. I think it's just to throw in another red herring. But, I mean, like, who's going to seriously think that you know this is the guy who's who's the real killer when you you see her actually like looking to find her but i mean like i think that's but i think despite that glaring plot hole because let's face it there's plenty in this movie uh i think that's the reason it was in the movie and i agree if they did if it wasn't in there i would have been totally cool well yeah me me too and i think that's why they did it it was it that scene right there, the way it was handled, the way she handles the boyfriend showing up is a prime example of a guy with a script trying to write a female part. <laughs> yeah. And it's just a and but it's a and it's uh, poorly poorly written it's, and it's, it's not needed. It's poorly but written. Like yeah, the, poorly the, written. whoever whoever wrote the uh the Batgirl section of the new Killing Joke movie probably looked at this and said, "Oh, that's some good writing. Yeah, awesome. <laughs> Way to give it up, girl power, right on." <laughs> it was it was like, "What? I don't understand the problem. What? 
not all men hashtag <laughs> oh my god it is it it is quite out of touch the whole character really is. Really is, is is just really misogynistic and unnecessary but all in all i gotta agree with you boys if you didn't quite catch it through the course of this episode, I love Boarding House. It's one of my favorite shit films of all time. I watch it quite often and with company. I think that is the key to watching Boarding House. Mm-hmm. Watch it with friends. You will have a blast with this. So let's go ahead and move on to final thoughts. Obviously, we know Scott Davis loves this movie. What are your final thoughts of Boarding House here, Scott Davis? Oh, said it. It's. I mean, it's. It's. I love movies that throw in everything but the kitchen sink, and that's what this movie does. It is fantastic. It is. Uh, it is. It is so strange. It is so odd, and you'd think that this movie would get boring because there's so much just character stuff uh, for people that aren't really otherwise developed and everything. And but it, everything is so nuts, and so that. Every piece is just like this more another like part of this little crappy little puzzle. And I love it. I think this thing is one of those just bonkers movies that you have to really embrace. And I think uh, it just the fact that it's also shot on video and was shown to theaters. I'm like, for some reason, that just like makes me love this movie even more. Like, because even that you're thinking, like, you think they spent 35, they spent like a few thousand dollars on this movie and then blew it up to 35 millimeter it probably cost more to blow it up than it did to shoot the whole movie absolutely and i love it for that i love it even more <laughs> it's mind-blowing and it, it truly is mark the movie man final thoughts It is a very mind blowing film if you think that oh i've seen it all and i can predict what such and such movie any movie i watch i can predict where it's gonna go yeah good luck with boarding house all right (laughs) good good luck with that because the solution the resolution which we've hinted to haven't spoiled it too much but hinted at you are gonna go "Eh?" yeah exactly (laughs) there is there is no lead up there is no build up the narrative in here is so 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 just like throwing pasta at the wall and seeing what sticks <laughs> that at the end of the film, you will not have predicted what it ended. Uh, but when you get done, yeah, you're going to want to call your friends and say, Hey, let's do a movie night. I got a great film for you. <laughs> no, no, trust me on this. You bring the beer. I'll bring the film. In fact, bring the hard liquor. Uh, <laughs> it It's again, it is, it is one of those though, that it's, it's charming in a lot of ways for Very a horror much so. film. It's charming in its honesty of what it is, I will say. You know, you, you see f- so many films, and we've mentioned it before, but you see so many films and filmmakers that nowadays trying to capture the B-movie feel or what. Yeah, you're... This a film like this will not get replicated the way it was put together and the produce the way it plays out. And as Scotty D said, there's extra charm in the fact knowing this actually played in theaters. Yep. This film actually got distribution. It, someone out there back in the 80s did enough lines of coke that said, dude, I got an idea. <laughs> let's hold on let's take boarding house and blow it up to 35 billion <laughs> <laughs> it'll be fucking awesome <laughs> but it doesn't make any sense it does now oh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, Mark. (laughs) I think it it seems like this movie was made under those circumstances, but there were some great interviews out there of um, John Wintergate and uh, his wife, Colossu. Mm -hmm. There's some interviews on the DVDs, but also if you go over and I I don't like promoting other podcasts that much that that I'm not buds with. Uh, but if you go over to the Splat House, they did an episode on Boarding House in which they had those two on, which is a really good interview. Cool. Skip past all their 
really disgustingly cringy banter. That podcast is obnoxious, but their interview with Wintergate is great because those two, it's obvious these are good people. They want, they had a crazy idea and they just went for it. Mm -hmm. And you got to love, that's what I love about shot on video is that the reason why a lot of these work is because they're not made by professionals. They're made by amateurs that have no delusions that they're making anything other than what they're making. And well, boarding house, it shines because of this. Well, and, and there are people that I'm so digging and I'm glad you're taking me on this journey through shot on video, Derek, because and I don't know if we've mentioned it before, but these are people where they didn't have anyone saying they couldn't do that. Right. These are people who came up with an idea and chose the best possible way they could within their abilities to do something. They didn't have anyone to sit there and go, well, you don't have the money for that or that's going to be, you know, you can't do that effect. That's going to cost too much. They knew what budget they had and they still went ahead and did it because they had no one there saying, well, no, that's not going to work. And it comes through on screen. And many of these just feel so sincere that you can't help but at least like them for that, if nothing else, is their sincerity. At least these early ones, for sure. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I absolutely love them. And I love Boarding House. And I hope you guys dug this episode as much as we enjoyed revisiting this movie and coming and talking about it. So... Next episode, folks, we do it every year. You better be ready. The most popular series of episodes on Astro Radio Z, regretfully, are the horror porn parody episodes. And next week, we are going to be bringing you part three of our yearly journey through porn parodies without the porn that are centered on horror films now curated by Scott Davis this year. <laughs> so Scott, do you want to tell the people what the movies are? We're going to be covering next week. No, <laughs> <laughs> I, no I want them to come in. I want them to come in clean. I really do. Okay. I respect that. I can respect that. So mark it down on the calendars, folks. The next couple weeks of Astro Radio Z are going to be doozies. we got the horror porn parody. And then the week after they, that is going to be our ghoul summer episode where oh, Mark boy. the Movie Man and I in some way chisel out a little piece of our heart and our brain and watch five Traces of Death films. Five? There's five of them, Mark. Oh, dear Lord. I've got to figure out what what the angle is. We got to we got to create some sort of game to get through these. <laughs> we got it. There's no way we're going to be able to watch these without having some sort of angle to watch in these because I'll tell you. <laughs> every you better you Every time it feels like your soul's about to die, you take a drink. <laughs> <laughs> I do not want to drink while watching these because there will no longer be an Astro Radio Z. I will have committed suicide. No, thanks. But anyways, those are the next two weeks of Astro Radio Z. So get ready, folks. It is summertime here. And boy, oh, boy, <laughs> these are going to be a few weirdo weeks. So this is the portion of the show where my guests shamelessly show the fuck out of you. Mark the movie man. Go for it. Uh, find my stuff on specialmarkproductions.com where these two fine gentlemen occasionally are on my podcast, The Spoiler Room. Uh, we're in the finishing up our bat month right now. Uh, and then we're uh, next month getting an exclusive here on Astro Radio Z, giving you a little hint. We've got Western Month coming up to where we're actually going to be covering Western films. Uh, so that should be interesting. You can also find me on the Twitters at Special Mark Pro and on the YouTubes at Special Mark Prod. And Mr. Scott Davis. Uh, you can catch me at Moviocrity.com. I promise I'll update it soon. Uh, and you can also catch my web series all about exploitation film. That's called Moviocrity. And you can catch all those at Vimeo.com slash channel slash Moviocrity. 
I want to thank you guys for sticking around with me through all of these shot on video episodes. We have a few more to go. This is the year of shot on video. We'll be doing it all this year. And then next year we'll think of another theme because I think we'll take a little bit of a break next year. Maybe we'll do spaghetti Westerns or we'll do something, but thank you for joining me on this journey. And also to my Patreons, I have not given up on Patreon. (laughs) I have been super busy. So if your feeds have been a little quiet lately, that's the reason why I've barely had any time for myself lately. So I know Amanda and I are going to be doing a commentary episode on Killer Nerd coming up, hopefully in the next week or so. And then we're going to start doing some more of those fan film theater episodes. (laughs) I have a doozy of one I haven't presented to Mark yet. No, Uh we're going to. Hopefully, in the next week or two, we're going to start bringing that back, and you're going to be seeing a lot more knee-jerk episodes out of me because, man, there's a lot of movies coming out soon. I want to go see that Spider-Man movie. I want to see that uh, Apes movie. There's a ton of stuff coming out, so uh, prepare yourself. The Patreon's going to blow up yet again, and I know I have a lot of content from this episode (laughs) that's going to hit the cutting room floor, so look for that, but uh, anyways... Have a good one, and next week, boy, a lot of non-sex horror porn parodies coming your way, so see you later. Bow, bow.